America, New York City, John F. Kennedy Airport, July 17, 1996. Security is tight at New York's busiest airport. Tens of thousands of people will pass through JFK today on some 1,000 flights. They are all potential targets for terrorist attack. In nearby Manhattan, terrorist Ramzi Youssef is in the U.S. federal court. He's on trial for trying to blow up the World Trade Center with a 600-kilogram truck bomb. But he's also accused of masterminding a plot to kill hundreds of innocent people with bombs planted on 12 U.S. airplanes. The FBI knows that many members of Youssef's terrorist cell remain at large and could still target planes for attack. We were at a very high state of alert in the United States. Uh, we'd had numerous, numerous threats, hundreds of threats. Heading to JFK today are two young college students from Macon, Georgia. Becky Olson is 20 years old. She's been best friends with 19-year-old Michelle Becker since high school. Do you think we're going to fit all this stuff in here? They're excited. Today they'll fly to Paris for a friend's wedding, followed by a backpacking holiday around Europe. The girl's parents have given the trip their blessing. They were very excited to be going. They just knew it was going to be a wonderful new adventure. They thought that this was just going to be the best thing since chocolate cake. This will be an extra special trip. Michelle's dad, Walter Becker, has saved enough air miles to upgrade the girls to first class. Back then, first class was first class, and uh, I felt that they would really enjoy that, both going and, and returning back home. 4.31 p.m. The Boeing 747 that will become TWA Flight 800 to Paris arrives at JFK. It's 25 years old and has more than 16,000 flights under its belt. Tanker trucks move in to fuel up the plane. The ground crew pumps 114,000 liters of jet A fuel into the six wing tanks. It's more than enough to fly to Paris. The biggest tank, the center wing tank, can stay as it is, almost empty. Just outside Baltimore, Maryland, 29-year-old Jamie Hurd finishes up last-minute chores at the family garage. Yeah, okay, you pick it up Tuesday, how's that? All right, thank you very much, bye-bye. Since joining two years ago, Jamie has computerized the office for his dad, Jim. You know, he kind of brought us into the, the present age, from back from the dark ages. Jamie is flying to Paris to hook up with his girlfriend, Hope, who's in France on an exchange visit. It's his first flight to Europe. Inside JFK's Terminal 5, Michelle Becker calls home to ask her mother for advice. Hi, Mom. TWA is offering cash incentives for passengers to take a later flight. Do you think we should take the bomb flight? Because I think we can get some money. What do you think? It's a tough dilemma. The girls don't want to risk losing their free upgrade, but as students, they could use the money. 6 p.m. 212 passengers board Flight 800 in good time for a 7 p.m. takeoff. Among them is Jamie Hurd. He's only eight hours away from seeing his girlfriend, Hope. In charge of the crew this evening is Captain Steven Snyder. With 4,700 hours of flying time on 747s, he's one of TWA's most experienced pilots. Flying alongside Snyder is Captain Ralph Kevorkian, another TWA veteran. 7 p.m. Captain Snyder and the flight crew are ready to go. But there's a problem. One of the passengers is not on board, but her bags are already in the hold. In 1988, Pan Am 103 exploded in mid-air over the town of Lockerbie in Scotland, killing 270 people. 
Terrorists checked a bag containing a bomb into the hold, but didn't board the plane. Since then, planes cannot take off with a bag in the hold if the passenger who checked it is not on board. The plane is delayed while ground staff hunt for the missing passenger. Outside, it's 28 degrees Celsius, and on the asphalt of the apron, the jumbo is getting hot. As the minutes tick by, air conditioning units under the fuselage keep the passengers cool. 50 minutes go by, and there is still no sign of the mystery passenger. At 7.59 p.m., gate personnel contact the crew. TWA Flight 800, sorry about that delay. We have confirmation that the passenger is on board. They were on board the whole time. 8.19. At last, Captain Kevorkian throttles up the 747. Flight 800 lifts off an hour and 20 minutes late. TWA 800's flight path will take it through some of the most congested airspace in the USA. It will also skirt the boundary of a US military zone to the south. Air traffic control keeps flights well clear of any restricted airspace during weapons testing. 831, Flight 800 climbs into the evening sky. Eastwind Airlines pilot David McLean is flying a 737 into Trenton, New Jersey. He sees the jumbo jet ahead of him. It was a nice night, good visibility. There's a lot of traffic going out there, so you always got to keep your eyes out. Air traffic control clears Flight 800 to climb to its next level. TWA 800, have you turn left heading 050, vector climbing around traffic. Climb the 15,000. Crew and passengers settle in for the flight. Then, suddenly. And I thought, gee, they must have two to three hundred people on board. I thought it was a bomb. Twelve minutes out of JFK on a routine trip to Paris. TWA Flight 800 explodes in a huge fireball. air traffic control. Flight 800 suddenly disappears off radar screens. East Winds pilot David McLean reports in to air traffic control. We just saw an explosion out here, about 16,000 feet. It just went down into the water. Air traffic control tries to raise Flight 800 on the radio. TWA 800, if you hear center, ident. There's no response. TWA 800, if you hear center, ident. The terrible truth starts to dawn. TWA 800, center, source. Thousands of meters below, a helicopter from the Air National Guard flying on a training mission is caught beneath the blast. I looked over my right shoulder and this fire exploded across the sky and came down like a curtain, like napalm. Flaming aircraft debris starts to fall all around them. Some of it was still on fire. We actually saw embers. Now the helicopter crew is in danger. If debris hits the rotor blades, they too could crash into the water. We have to get out of here. The helicopter makes it away safely. They race to get help. Back at base, Major Mike Noyes prepares to take command of the helicopter and head out to the crash site. Obviously, the adrenaline's starting to flow. I'm thinking we're going out to search for survivors. 
He knows that it is possible to survive a plane crash into water. And the sea temperature is around 18 degrees Celsius. If there are people in the water, they could stay alive for up to eight hours. The Coast Guard at East Mauritius, Long Stand Island, gets the word that a plane has gone down. Stand by your lights. Under two, on the way, zero three, 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 three. They speed out to sea. First on the scene is the Air National Guard rescue helicopter. The sea below them is on fire. Picture a campfire that's a quarter and a half mile long, but the flames are, oh, I don't know, they're at least 10 feet high. Meanwhile, reports of the disaster start to break on the news channels. This is the latest we have on the flight that crashed tonight of TWA Flight 800 into the waters off Long Island, New York. This was on its way. Among those watching are Aurelie and Walter Becker. They realize it's the flight of their daughter, Michelle. The first pictures you saw were shot from the helicopter with the debris field and the flames coming out of the water. And uh, uh, I said, oh my God. But then Aurelie Becker remembers Michelle's last minute phone call from the airport. Do you think we should take the bomb flight? Because I think we can get some money. Michelle told her mother that TWA were offering cash incentives to take a later flight. Aurelie recalls with horror that she advised Michelle and her friend Becky to stay on flight 800. Now she prays that the girls ignored her advice. I said, I wonder if they ever really got on the flight. Maybe they did take a jump seat and, and they aren't on it. Orally calls Becky's parents. She speaks to Becky's father, Donald Olson. Hey, Orally, what's up? I said, you didn't get a call from Becky that they took a, a bump ticket, did you? Donald says, no. The girls didn't call. And Arlie said, there's been a plane crash. You need to turn on CNN. A 747 aircraft has exploded in midair about 20 miles south of New York's Long Island into the Atlantic Ocean. The families realize Michelle and Becky did get on the flight. Now all they can do is helplessly watch the horrifying scenes. But they still hope that their girls may have survived the crash. You know, you talk to each other and you hold each other and you cry and you you say, well, you know, the girls were very athletic. They were good swimmers. Search and rescue we know is a nightmare. They are looking for people who survived this. I just told Becky to swim hard. All night long. Families all over the United States and beyond endure a waking nightmare. Their only hope that somewhere in the darkened water, their loved ones cling on to life long enough to be rescued. En route to Paris from JFK with 230 people on board, TWA Flight 800 explodes and plunges burning into the Atlantic. Two hours later, in the deepening darkness, rescuers scour the ocean for anyone who may still be alive. After three hours of searching, none of the hundreds of rescuers can find a single survivor. They've covered 13 square kilometers of ocean. It's now clear that all 230 people on board died in the crash. The helicopter rescue team heads back to base. We did our best that night to uh, try and find anyone who could have survived that crash. And uh, to return empty-handed was uh, a very low blow. sun rises on an ocean littered with the remains of Flight 800.
boat crews bring pieces of wreckage to the Coast Guard station at East Mauritius.